So here we are, we're playing a new Total War Thrones of Britannia campaign. We have been building up our economy as the Kingdom of Wessex, and we're now taking King Alfred's army, his British army right here. Well, this isn't England yet, actually. This is, uh, this is Wessex, and all of the other kingdoms are currently either neutral or they're just friendly to our kingdom right here. So the Viking invaders have invaded and we're bringing an army forward. We've stashed some some cavalry over there in the woodland which I don't think the enemy know about as of yet. And we've got a huge army right here marching up against, uh, let's have a look shall we? Marching up against the Viking army which has landed on the shorelines of southern England and they're going to be trying to kill our king and try and gain a foothold within our land so we're playing this campaign on hard and I'm not too sure how um, if it's gonna be like one of those campaigns that we did last time where we got completely obliterated within the first five turns so hopefully it's not like that um, hopefully we can actually get somewhere with this campaign but um, I've been doing a lot of practicing and I feel like I'm in a position now where I know what I'm doing on this game and I know that we can try and take over England well unite one England should we say so we'll see what happens I don't know who's gonna win this battle it's quite even and uh, I could have auto resolved it and but I wasn't too sure if I would win or not so I figured we're definitely gonna have to play this one Anyway, let's have a look over here. So we've got some hidden cavalry units over here. And I'm hoping that these guys will be enough to outflank them as soon as we move the rest of the army in. So let's go ahead and move the army forward and try and draw them out if we can. going to get them to walk if possible just so we can preserve their energy. Look how cool this is. Um, if you didn't know, this is my favourite. Um, okay. Oh crap! Oh no 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 no! Right, everyone, hold position. Archers, archers, come on! What are you doing? Brilliant. That's what we want to see. Right, get behind them. And now we're going to charge. Oh, they formed a wedge formation. This isn't good. So what we're going to do right here, let's try and create a shield wall if possible. Can we create a shield wall? Let's go for toggle guard mode. Shield wall on those guys. I don't think we can do shield wall on all of them, but there we go. Here's the charge. The first battle of our campaign is underway. Look at that. Enemy cavalry have engaged, so now let's bring forward our cavalry to try and outflank them if possible. Okay, in fact, let's flank this area right here. Charge those ones in. Charge those in. Try and support the line as much as possible. Our king is safe at the back. You want to see the king? Here he is. Hiding. Whoa, damn, look, he's got like three spears. Don't route. What are you doing? Who's routing? Let's have a look. Um, okay, so we've got some archers, that's all. That's not too bad. That's for you guys. Get in there. You support them, because there's a lot of them there. I like to play this on um, cinematic mode, as I think it's just super cool. There we go, our cavalry's coming in on the flank. Hopefully that should put them into route. I don't know what their cavalry unit's doing, though. I wonder if they're going to charge into the rear of my cavalry. Oh, their cavalry's really hitting my uh, my soldiers right there. So they've completely wiped out my archers, but we're still holding steady line down here. Look, my king's taking a bit of a beating right here. Let's try and bring some of our cavalry into their archers. There we go. We've got our soldiers behind their lines now, so we'll completely break the enemy's lines. That's what we want to see. I wonder if we can kill the Viking King right here. His name is, uh, I forgot his name actually, King Amund, I believe. But we could lose our King in this battle as well. Oh crap, this is not good, this is not good. 
We've had a cavalry charge hitters on the rear. That could put our men into rout. Right. So, right, let's regroup so we can gain a charge if we can. Don't rout. Do not rout. Do not rout. Do not rout. You've got this. Right, so we're bringing our cavalry back and we're going to do a full-blown charge into the enemy's flank now and hopefully try and put them into, into rout if possible. There we go. Hopefully that should do some damage right there. We can also bring our soldiers around this flank as well. Moving those. In fact, is that our spearmen right there? Or are they axemen? Yeah, they're... No, they're swordsmen. Okay, that's just a standard infantry. But yeah, I'll show you guys the campaign map in a moment. So far, so good. Let's go into cinematic mode again. Look at this. Hopefully this is the biggest Viking army that's landed on our shores. There we go. Whoa, there's a big bulk of them over there. Let's see if we can bring the majority of our army round here now and reinforce our soldiers on the left. On the right, should I say. Yeah, like I say, dude, sir, this is like my favourite Total War at the moment. I don't know why. Quite an old one, but Total War Thrones of Britannia, there's just something about it. So, as is playing as Wessex, we're trying to unite all of the kingdoms, being Kingdom of Mercia, the Kingdom of East Anglia, and all the other English kingdoms, which are at the moment separate. But um, hopefully at some point we can unite them all under one kingdom. Which will be the Kingdom of Angoland, or England, or whatever you want to call it. So it should be a kingdom united, that of Bavara. Hey, there we go. King Amund is dead. How are we doing for our king? Our king's still intact. So let's bring our cavalry over there just to try and sort out those bloody archers because... There we go. Hopefully our cavalry should take out these archers now. And there we go. We've got a victory. That's what we want to see. Let's have a look at the battlefield really quick. Damn. So cool. And we still hold intact most of our army. Looking good. So, luckily, we didn't lose a lot of men. We did do pretty well, though. I'm not going to lie. So, let's uh, end that battle right there. They ain't really got anywhere to run to. So, we're going to save that replay as well, just so we can refer back to it. So, we call that our first battle. In, I don't know. I'm just going to name it that or something. There we go, just so I can refer back to it in the future. Probably make a compilation, because the cool thing is we can replay these battles, do like another commentary over them, or maybe I could like turn it into a bit of a cinematic for like catching up in this series. So what should we do? We've got kill captives. Um, I want to kill them because I want to make an example of them, you see. And hopefully we should be able to just finish them off now. Yeah, there we go. I'm just going to finish them off. King Amund is dead. We do a night attack. Doesn't really make a difference, but we'll also resolve that one. And there we go, fight aggressive. And that's the Viking Raiders finished. Lovely. So I don't know how this is going to play out, like I say, because, you know, anything can happen. We'll kill the capsules again. The Nordmen are no more. So what happened was the Nordmen attacked from France over here, which you can't see on the map because they've made Britain so big in this game. Um, but they came down from the sea and they landed in Southampton, Southampton. And I started losing a lot of food because of them landing there, which sort of put me into a bit of a famine. And um, luckily I was able to sort of fix that famine by building up some farms like these things right here. And luckily I only had one turn left on one of my other farms and um, it, it put me out of the famine. But look at that, we've got 107 food at the moment. Let's just uh, build another farm whilst we're at it. And we've got an income of nearly 4,000 per turn. 
So what we're going to do is now we're going to get King Alfred's army and we're going to try and slowly but surely send him back to the capital of Winchester and uh, replenish his army. We do have a second army up north as well if we can find him. There he is. This guy right here, his name is Ethelwald. And if we look at our family tree, we can see we've got King Alfred the Great. He is our current faction leader. He's the King of Wessex. Um, I, I've married my daughter, Ethelswith. Um, or is that my sister? I'm not sure. I think that might be... Yeah, it is. It's my sister. So I've married my sister to... My, my, my king's... The king's sister to King Harold of Mercia. Which has sort of forged an alliance between our two groups. So we've declared like a friendship. And also a defensive alliance with Mercia at the moment. And Mercia have actually called us to action. Because they're, they're at war up in the north. Um, I think against these guys right here, which is, I think it's the Kingdom of Derby or something. It might be these guys. Let's just double check right there. But hover over it. Yeah, Derby. So they're at war with Derby at the moment, and they've called me to try and send an army up north to support them. Um, but I obviously had to focus my attentions down in the south to take out the Vikings. And we did a very good job because they're no longer a thing. So anyway, let's. Um, what we'll do is we've got plenty of food anyway. Uh, we're going to try and build up our army in the north as well. So the Resolute Wall. Maybe you guys can come up with some ideas. Tell me in the comment section what should we call our armies. We've got the Resolute Wall here for Athelwald. Who is currently holding the position of... Who's Athelwald? Let's have a look. Um, we've got Governors. So Athelwald... Oh, see, Alfric actually. He's... He's not very loyal at the moment, so we're going to quickly try and secure his loyalty. Um, so he doesn't, like, sort of forge a rebellion against me. So we're going to pay him off, and hopefully that shouldn't be a problem. Hrothwyd as well. I think we're going to try and secure his loyalty. If they get too bad, and their loyalty just keeps going lower and lower and lower, I'm just going to try and... I'm going to assassinate them, because I just don't think it's worth it, especially on the hard difficulty. But for now, I mean, we can try and secure his loyalty. So we'll do that right now. Publicly thank him. So now if we look at Hrothwyd, he's got three. That's good. That's what I want to see. And yeah, let's uh, continue the campaign, I guess. So we're going to get Harold back into Winchester to replenish his units. And we're going to start building up our units over here. We've got 107 food, so we don't want to use up too much food. But we do want to... Try and build up somewhat of an army just to go and support the Mercians and build our relationship up with their king, if, we, if possible. So there we go. Well, we've got that in the bag. So King Harold. Is it King Harold? It is... Yep, King Harold of Mercia. That's now my brother-in-law, the King of Wessex. Okay. So where's our family members, anyway? Ethelhelm. Is this... Uh, is that, what's that dude up here? This dude is called... So, Athwald. Af so, what's his relationship? Athwald is in here somewhere, surely. Government. Oh, okay, we can also assign governors and land as well. Just thought I'd put that out there. So, if we want to try and improve our relationship with any of our nobles, we can actually take somewhere and give them a governorship. Or we can grant them more estates. Um, at the minute, I can only sort of grant Alfred's estates because if I try and take an estate of somebody else, they start their loyalty starts to dwindle, and they they don't they don't like me anymore. And there's a chance they could join the rebels, or try and take the crown. That's what I love about this uh, this game. They don't really do this in any other Total War. But you've got so much control, and it just feels like there's just so much more role play involved when it comes to this game. So anyway, let's uh, continue to build. We've got low public order in Middlesex. Why? Let's have a look over here then. What What's the public order level? So it's only minus one. That's not too bad. What we could do is I could send an army over there at some point if it gets too bad. Just to try and uh, cool things down. So anyway, let's continue to build up our army. Over here, I think we need to end turn. But so far, so good. I never did find this guy, did I? He's a general, I think. Who's that? So Sussex, that is. You see, they've got all these old Roman names. But um, as a Britishman, I'm, I'm from England, obviously. And 
I can uh, I can pretty much read what all of these are, even though they're in Old English. So, for example, you've got Wintiancester, whatever it's called, our capital over here. That's actually Winchester. Uh, over there, you've got uh, Gloucester. We've got Oxford, which is up in north. Uh, Doncaster, Buckingham. I don't know what that is. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Hastings, the Battle of Hastings. That's where that would have happened. About well, what year is it? Say so, so about two, three hundred years time. That's when the Battle of Hastings will happen. Um, so yeah, like I say, um, this is at a time when Vikings were sort of trying to build up their relationship with the Saxon kingdoms. So the Saxon kingdoms at the moment is pretty much only Wessex. Wessex is the only we Saxons that are, are left. Uh, the Mercians are sort of half Saxon, half Viking. So half like Dane. And then you've got East Anglia, which are like the most powerful Viking kingdom at this precise moment. So, yeah, I think we're going to have to try and develop our technology, develop our diplomacy, and we'll start a really, really cool series out of this. I'm really looking forward to this, because I can just chill, you see. It's one of those games where I can sort of relax. So we've got 90 food. We can build up our army just that little bit more. Got some more swordsmen. Um, do we need spearmen? I mean, they're a bit crap, aren't they? We don't want... I'm going to wait, and I think we're going to try and get some more swordsmen. The longer that we wait, the better they'll build up in terms of supplies and in terms of men as well. They're going to keep recruiting them. So King Alfred has got some more skills. I'm just going to have to keep improving the champion until we get to full and then I'll probably start working on pillager or something along those lines. How old is our king actually? Let's have a look. So our king is currently... Does he have an age? His age is 33, so he's still a young king. How old is Harold? It doesn't say, does it? Um, but yeah, we've got some family members as well. And this is actually true to history. Um, this is King Edward. He's actually next in line. For some reason, though, they've set ne the next in line to be... Where is he? Let's go to Statesman. Ethelhelm. And I think that's only because Edward is currently only eight years old. And he's not yet of age. But as soon as he comes of age... We're going to appoint him to be faction heir. So he becomes king next. Just to try and keep it somewhat historical. So Ethelwald as well. That's the king's brother's son. I think in the in that series. I forgot what it was called. Um, I, I have to, I'll remember it at some point. But there's a series on Netflix. And I know at some point Ethelwald wants the crown. And he betrays Edward and Alfred. So. And we've got Ethelweird as well. That's our daughter. So we can marry her off at some point, which would be pretty cool. Preferably to the either the East Anglians or the Mercians, because then we can strengthen our alliance with them. See, my, my goal is not to sort of take any of them out. I want to try and build up my relationship with them and make them vassals, make them vassal states. And then we can work on taking out Wales, crushing rebellions, building up our economy, and eventually move north into Northumbria, uh, liberate them because I know there's some um, like Danes over here and there's a lot of rebel kingdoms same with Wales as well and then maybe at some point we could do a king um, a campaign of Ireland um, but we'll have to see so anyway we're going to call this video here uh, as episode one and I'll be sure to create episode two in the near future so what we'll do is we'll make a playlist and you guys can just watch this campaign sort of unfold and we'll do it until we lose. I mean, if we lose, we lose. But we're just going to keep making videos until we either win or lose. So, But I've, I've got a good feeling about this one. I feel like um, I'm pretty good at Total War now. And uh, we're going to go far with this campaign. So let's get this guy back in Winchester anyway. Replenish his units. And let's start building up our army over here. Uh, which we're going to do next turn, I think. And then we're going to, in the next episode, send them north into Mercia and try and support them against the Kingdom of Derby. And, uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens. I'll have to gain military access first, though, if, they, if I haven't already got it as a defensive kingdom. So anyway, I'm Mike Map 123 I hope you enjoyed. Leave me some comments, give me your feedback, give me your strategies. Um, join the Discord as well if you want to communicate directly. And I'll see you all in the next video.